Demodis theorem. Now, Dewan's Demodis theorem is the continuation of complex numbers, which we have already discussed in the previous session. Now, what is the significance of Demodis theorem? Before we discuss the theorem in brief, it is very important to understand the significance of Demodis theorem in the branch of mathematics. Now, Demodis theorem helps us. in finding the roots of complex numbers. So it is used in finding the nth roots, especially in finding the nth roots of unity is one of the most significant part of the de Morris theorem. Now let's see how we can find the nth roots of unity using the de Morris theorem or how we can find the nth roots of the complex number using de Morris theorem. Now initially to start with an integral index that is when n is an integer we have an exclusive de Morris theorem. So let's see what is de Morris theorem for an integral index the index being an integer. So here, for theta being a real number and n being an integer, for theta belonging to R and n belonging to Z, we have cos theta plus I sine theta whole power n is cos n theta plus I sine n theta is how we have de Morris theorem for an integral index because cos theta plus i sine theta is a complex number when raised to an integral or an integer n gives me directly the integer the index comes to the base of the angle as cos n theta plus i sine n theta for this and note Since cos theta plus i sine theta is referred as cis theta in the short form, therefore my de Morris theorem can be split as cis power n theta is cis n theta is how we understand the de Morris theorem for a rational index in a shortcut form as cis power n theta is cis n theta which is nothing but same as this equals this. Now that we have discussed about de Morris theorem for an integral index, now comes the question, what if the index is rational, which is not an integer? So let's see how the theorem is stated for a rational index and belonging to Q. So for theta belonging to real numbers and n belonging to rational numbers, my de Morris theorem says that cos theta plus i sine theta whole power n has one of the values as cos n theta plus i sine n theta but not exactly equal but this has one of its value as cos n theta plus i sine n theta is how we conclude for n belonging to Q in the form P by Q. Now let's define the nth root of a complex number because this plays a vital role in de Morris theorem. The whole of de Morris theorem is about finding the nth roots of a complex number. Therefore, it is very essential that we define nth root of a complex number and then connect this with de Morris theorem. So in order for this, let me consider n belonging to z plus or n is a positive integer and z naught which is not equal to 0 is a given complex number. 
then such that z power n equal to z naught <coughs> such that this equal to this that implies z equal to nth root of z naught or z naught power 1 by n is called nth root of z naught is how we understand nth root of a complex number. So z equal to this implies it's a nth root of a complex number. Now let's find the formula for nth root of a complex number. So any given complex number I can find the nth roots of that complex number using the formula which we are going to discuss now. That is for theta belonging to real numbers and n belonging to z plus, if my complex number z is r times cos theta plus i sin theta, then for this, that implies the nth roots of z are given by, of complex number z are given by r power 1 by n of cos theta plus 2k pi by n plus i sin theta plus 2k pi by n is how we derive the formula of nth roots of a complex number z. <coughs> First k is said to run from 0, 1, 2 till n minus 1 is how we understand the nth roots of a complex number for k running from 0 to n minus 1. So each of this denoted by a k is given by a0, a1, a2, a3 till a n minus 1 which are nth roots depending on each of k. Each of k before defines each of the complex number with that respect to k substituted here. So this is denoted with a k and k running from 0 to n minus 1, the nth roots of a complex number z. And also note that for each of k, you have each of a k, that is for k equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 till n minus 1, I have nth roots of z, which are a0 for k equal to 0, then a1, a2 till a n minus 1 are all distinct. All a k's are distinct that is they are not going to coincide is how we need to understand the distinct property of each of the nth roots of z secondly i find that one of a k coincides with actual z so every complex number coincides with one of its nth root is how we understand the second property that is one of a k coincides with z is how we get the nth roots of a complex number connected with these two basic properties one is all a k's are distinct and the other is one of a k coincides with z. <coughs>